Madam Chair, thanks to all of the nominees for being here. Congratulations on your nominations. Uh, Mr. Fleming, if I could start with you, I want to ask you about the case of United States versus Brown, which was decided by the Sixth Circuit in which you petitioned the Supreme Court to review. Do you remember that case? It's been a few years ago. I do, Senator. Thank you. This, this is a case, as I understand it, that involves a, a grandfather who used his two minor step-granddaughters as subjects in a child pornography film while he was their legal guardian. You represented him for several years. You made a number of arguments on his behalf that I want to ask you about because I find them a little concerning. In 2006, you challenged the facial and as applied constitutionality of 18 U.S.C. 2255, 2251B. That's the statute that deals with parents or guardians of children who are involved and complicit in the production of child pornography. You argued, and I'm gonna quote now from the court's opinion, quote, that private production of a sexually explicit picture does not substantially affect interstate commerce, end quote, and therefore the statute should be struck down. Now, the district court and the Court of Appeals both rejected that argument out of hand of the Sixth Circuit, drew an analogy between the production of child pornography and drug production, that both illegal goods feed the national market and stimulate demand. And at the time that he entered his plea agreement, the defendant whom you represented admitted to having uploaded this child pornography involving his granddaughters uh, to the internet. So I, I just want to be clear here on, on your arguments. Do you still believe that the production of child pornography is outside of Congress's power to punish? Thank you for the question, Senator, and pardon my hoarse voice. Um, at that time, um, the arguments uh, that uh, we made on behalf, or I made on behalf of Mr. Brown, um, I did not intend to uh, put forth the argument that Congress cannot, um, or that the statute uh, cannot reach child pornography generally. What we were saying was that um, the statute, because they were applying the statute to Mr. Brown, um, and that arguably his conduct was intrastate, um, that the statute reached too broad for purposes of the Commerce Clause. Having said that, um, the Sixth Circuit ruled against me on that. And if I were so fortunate to be confirmed as United States District Judge, I'm duty bound to follow the precedent of the Sixth Circuit um, and I would follow that. Why would it not affect interstate commerce when he uploaded the pornography to the internet? There was no allegation, excuse me, there was no allegation as I understand it, and it's been, it's been the better part of 20 years since, since I litigated that case. Yeah, yeah. So if I don't remember all the nuances, I apologize. But um, there was no allegation that, uh, in, in, at least in the charges, as I recall, that um, he had distributed it. It was simply that he possessed those pictures. And the, so we were making the argument that, uh, on his behalf, that um, that reached too far since it was simply his intrastate um, putting on the internet, but not actually distributing the, uh, the, the alleged pornography to others. So is it your view that if a defendant merely, quote unquote, merely uploads child pornography, in this case involving his own granddaughters, to the internet, but doesn't actively distribute it in any other way, whatever that would mean, that federal law doesn't apply? No, Senator. If, if I were so for fortunate to be confirmed, I would follow whatever the precedent of the circuit and the Supreme Court is at that time and apply it to the case before me fairly and impartially. Let me ask you about drug laws because the Sixth Circuit in, in this case specifically drew the analogy with, with our drug laws and said that you know, this, this, this argument had been addressed in the drug context that the, indeed the U.S. Supreme Court has repeatedly held that intrastate drug production of necessity affects the interstate market and therefore can be regulated. So let me just ask you whether you think Congress has the power to punish intrastate drug production. Thank you, Senator. Not only do I understand the law to contemplate that Congress can regulate intrastate drug production, but Congress does regulate it. Uh, and it does so through uh, 21 U.S.C. Section 841 and like statutes. 
and it does so through its commerce, commerce Clause power, as you indicated, because it does affect the industry with regard to drug marketing. So yes, I believe that the statutory law and precedent uh, supports the idea of regulating intrastate drug production. Very good. I may have another question or two for you about this case, and that'll give you time. We'll give it to you for the record, which will give you time to refresh your memory. And I have a few questions for the other uh, nominees as well, which we'll give to you for the record because my time's expired. Thank you all, and thank you, Madam Chair. Ranking Member Grassley.